or just this side of Malichi if you live up in the country. Anybody want to take a shot at how you say Zechariah in Hebrew? Zechariah! <laughs> that was my best Jack. Oh, did you are! That's Japanese. <laughs> Zechariah! Zechariah. It means God or Yahweh remembers or Yahweh has remembered. Zakar is remembers Yah God. Zakar Yah. Isn't that cool? Yah has remembered. Zechariah 1 1. In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zakar Yah, the son of Barakiah. Which probably is not right either. Berechiah. Berechiah will say, the son of Edo, the prophet, saying, <clears throat> the date of this is October the 27th, 520 BC. Very good. And once again, it's in reference to a Gentile monarch, not a Jewish king, because of the point in time where they are. And this is the same time frame as Haggai. This is a few, a couple months later from Haggai's prophecy. They're right there together. You don't believe me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Ezra 5, chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Edo, prophets, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God of Israel who was over them. So Zerubbabel, the son of Shethiel, and Jeshua, the son of Josadak, rose up and began to build the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, helping them. They were right there tag-teaming them. With Ezra, who was the spiritual leader there, who brought reformation and brought back we read in Ezra, remember where he gathered the people and read the Torah and they all wept. And they got rid of their, their foreign wives and they started celebrating the feast again. They're reconstructing, resurrecting. Yes? God gave them exactly what they needed. Yeah. They gave them the, the prophets that would be the ones that would pull the weight to bring the people in tow, to bring them to, their, to the right direction. 
the word Barakiah means his is blessed of Yah, and the word Ido means beautiful or another name. <laughs> okay. okay. God has remembered them. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 2. The Lord has been very angry with your fathers. And what very angry literally means is angry with anger. That's nicely said. That's like really, really mad. Yes, and I don't know about you, but I don't want to be on the wrong side of that mad. Mm -hmm. No way. Verse 3. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, The Lord of hosts. Here we go. Just like in Haggai. Mentioned over and over again. The Lord of hosts. Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets preached, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn now from your evil ways and your evil deeds. But they did not hear nor heed me, says the Lord. For your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? Yet surely my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your fathers? So they returned and said, Just as the Lord of hosts determined to do to us, according to our ways and according to our deeds, so he has dealt with us. See, this is a reminder of what happened to their forefathers. And a solemn warning not to repeat it again. Don't repeat the, the errors that your fathers did. Divine anger was emphasized along with extended grace. If you return to me, I'm going to return to you. It was a call to repentance. Their forefathers were responsible, the sins of their forefathers, responsible for the destruction of the temple. Now, the returnees, their sin is failing to rebuild the temple. Remember, it was 18 years from the time in 538 B.C. to 520 B.C. when Haggai started speaking out. Had passed, they built their own homes, but they hadn't built the temple, which is what they were supposed to come back and do. But God is now extending more grace, saying to repent, resume building my temple, and more importantly, return to Him. Return to me, God says. Come back. This is a warning and extending of grace. Is now followed by eight visions that Zechariah had in a single night. These weren't dreams. These were visions. He saw these things. Eight of them in one night. How would you like to have your sleep interrupted like that? I want to make a point that uh, okay. the book is over a seven year period of time. Okay. So that seven is covering a, dis, uh, a ground, laying groundwork out on different dispensations of time during which he will bring into tow the uh, basically the entire Bible, if you would, if you go into understanding. When we get a little yeah, later into yeah, this, thing, I mean, yeah, I mean, going yeah. to understand. We're just laying the groundwork right now. Yeah, these, right, we're right. going to go through the first six chapters this morning. Just to give you a little. Bit of we're laying the groundwork right. of what Zechariah was up to. All right. What God had, and what he was, what Zechariah was being used by Yah. Yah remembers. Now this was February the fifteenth, five nineteen B.C., two months two after months Haggai's ahead. last prophecy. He had eight visions, and they weren't, as I said, they were not dreams. The first is chapter 1, verse 7 through 17, and it's God's anger against the nations and blessing on the restored Israel. It says, on the 24th day of the 11th month, that's February 15th, 519 B.C., which is the month of Shabbat, in the second year of Darius, 
the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, the prophet. I saw by night, I saw by night, and behold, a man riding on a red horse, and it stood among the myrtle trees in the hollow, and behind him were horses, red, sorrel, and white. Then I said, My Lord, what are these? So the angel who talked with me said to me, I will show you what they are. What color is sorrel? Cat? Red. Oh. <laughs> so, sorrel? Yeah. I can't remember. Some kind of brown. Okay. A brown horse with a dark mane is a what? A bay. Oh. Remember? A bay? B A Y. Brown horse with a black mane, a bay. But a kind of a. I don't know that. More of a between red and blonde in the middle is a kind of light red. In the same color mane, that's a sorrel. Oh. Yeah. The red horse is just all red. White horse is all white. A horse that's gray with white spots all over it? Mm -hmm. What's that mixed in? I forgot. Dapple. dapple. That makes right. sense. Yeah. yeah, it's called a dapple. Okay. All right. I know that because I had horses. We had all those colors. <laughs> like a a horse with brown and white splotches. Paint? Yeah, a paint. Yeah. You got one last I had one, oh, we had two paints. One was named Cherokee and the other was named Apache. Wow. Because that's what the Indians rode. You always see them riding a the paint horse. What about an Appaloosa? I never had any apps, but the two paints were quarter horses. Yeah. Nice, big, strong horses. So we got a red horse, a sorrel, and white. These colors mean anything? No, there's nothing special about the colors. But the angel said, I'll show you what they are. And the man who stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, these are the ones who the Lord has sent to walk to and fro throughout the earth. So they answered the angel of the Lord, who stood among the myrtle trees and said, we have walked to and fro throughout the earth and behold, all the earth is resting quietly. Now, he saw this. He saw these individuals on the horses speaking to the angel of the Lord in response to his inquiry. Who's the angel of the Lord? Presence of God. If you want to say God, you may, if that's what you like. I'm going to say yes, you was. I'm going to say. Yeah, I mean, you can say that. Yeah, and I'm going to show you why I know it's yes, you here in a minute. It's here. Now, these are scouts. They're out. They're yep, out they're running. Going out. And, and they're in the myrtle trees. The myrtle is a specific type tree that is used in, if you go back into uh, Nehemiah, uh, I think it's when they celebrating a piece of tabernacles. It was part of the, the booze that they, they made. And it has a beautiful smelling flower that we use today as allspice. Well, you remember the myrtle is also one of the things they shake. The myrtle, the yes. lemon looking fruit and the palm frond and the, that, that's one, the myrtle is one of the things, four things they hold in the uh, piece of tabernacle. Okay, we're going to go on because there's more to it. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah against which you were angry these 70 years? And the Lord answered the angel and talked to me with good and comforting words. So the angel who spoke with me said to me, proclaim, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great zeal. I'm exceedingly angry with the nations at ease. See, the, the angels went out and found the, all these other nations that have harmed Israel or are at ease. But God's not happy with that. See? I'm exceedingly angry with the nations at ease, for I was a little angry, and they helped. God used them against Israel to teach them a lesson, but they did it with evil intent. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts. And a surveyor's line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. 
<laughs> and proclaimed, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, My cities shall again spread out through prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion and will again choose Jerusalem. God is restoring. And he's not only restoring now, but he's really going to restore in the future. And Zechariah has a lot of, it's a lot of double in their present, but also in the future, pointing to the millennial reign that we're going to see throughout, a theme throughout Zechariah. Ezekiel says in chapter 18 that God married Jerusalem. So he's already claimed it. Yes. It's the center of the universe in that respect. His. Now we're going to go, we're in verse, uh, let's see. Going to the next okay, so no, through this section, we have the rebuilding of the temple. And Ezra 6.15 said, Now the temple was finished on the third day of the month of Adar, which was the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. This is February, March, 515 B.C when the temple finally was completed. Remember, this is 519, so we're talking four years from now. The temple was noted in Ezra that it was completed. So they were building on it. They're rebuilding the city. Israel is going to be enriched and blessed through this process. The inhabitants, we read here, are being comforted, and they're being chosen once again to be God's people, to be the example that he wants to work through. So now we come to the next vision, which is the vision of horns. Verse 18. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were four horns. And I said to the angel who talked with me, What are these? So he answered me, These are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. And I said, What are these coming to do? So he said, these are the horns that scattered Judah so that no one could lift up his head, but the craftsmen are coming to terrify them, to cast out the horns of the nations that lifted up their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. God's getting ready to use nations to punish the nations that destroyed the temple. Remember, they're Christian nations that they... Christian they, nations. Well, they're truth. They're, uh, they have God's truth. What it is, these four horns are four different general areas that came in to disperse Judah and Israel and Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And what God was using those people. Yes, yes. Now he's going to send these four carpenters to terrify those four horns. In other words, it's going to be God's people that are coming to disrupt those people, to terrify them, coming against them, to dismantle them, take those powers away from them. They're going to be punished. Yes. They're going to be punished. Yes. The four carpenters. Okay. It's God's judgment on the nations that afflicted Israel. Okay. So now we come to chapter 2 and the next vision. <coughs> The surveyor line with the measuring line. Surveyor with the measuring line. It's God's future blessing on Israel and Israel being restored. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man with the measuring line in his hand said, So said I. So I said, Where are you going? And he said to me, To measure Jerusalem, see what its width and what its length is its length. And there was an angel who talked with me, going out, and another angel was coming out to meet him. We said to him, Run. Speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her, and I will be the glory in her midst. God's glory is returning, and he's going to protect them. They won't need walls because he's going to put his protection around them. That wall is a fire, but remember, it's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does not affect his people. 
but anything that is evil that tries to come into that wall of fire immediately is destroyed. Do not stand in the in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Verse 6. Up, up, flee from the land of the north, says the Lord, for I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven, says the Lord. Up, Zion, escape, you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plumb to you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. That's powerful. The apple of the eye literally, literally means the cornea, the, the pupil. The pupil, the very center part of the eye. This is what happens to people that don't know, that mess with God's people. Mm -hmm. That in return, God is going to disrupt them. That's what He's, He's going to punish them. To do right here. Verse 9, For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants. Anybody know what the word spoil is in Hebrew? <laughs> Hebrew? Um, it's the... Kiki uh, Kibis? Sh 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 name, name of my cat, Shalal. Shalal. I can't remember the name of the <laughs> That's what we named our cat, Shalal. <laughs> All the war. That's it right there. When you look it up, that's it. That's Shalal right there. <laughs> My hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I am coming, and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and they shall become my people. Where, what time frame is this talking about now? This is the return of Christ. Uh, <coughs> this is the millennial reign. Millennial reign. Yes. Because it says, many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. We're going to become the one new man. This is one new man time right here you're talking about. And I will dwell in your midst. Jesus is going to dwell right there amongst us. He's going to be there. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And the Lord will take possession of Judah as an inheritance in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent all flesh before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. That's, just, that's, that's what we got to look forward to. Jesus reigning in our midst. Right. That's, that's going to be an awesome day right there. Yes. Yes. Okay, next vision is of the high priest. 3 verse 1. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. Who can only remove iniquity? Jesus. <laughs> no angel could be saying this. Mm -hmm. No angel, angel. This is the angel of the Lord. The Amplified says rich robes, and then it says of forgiveness. Uh-huh. Who can forgive sin? No angel can forgive sin. Right. This so is this is this is the pre-incarnate Yeshua. It is a symbol of exactly that. Mm -hmm. And it's showing us here that his robes were filthy rags. That is from us. Those are our sins mm -hmm. that he took on himself. Mm -hmm. And here Satan, Satan the adversary is always there. He's the accuser of the brotherhood. He'll mm -hmm. always be there too. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, again, he said, I rebuke thee, O Satan. Are the, is this a firebrand plucked out of the fire? And that it is. And... Uh, That he 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 deserves uh, those the his raiment of white 
is is also what we receive also in it's a our picture of salvation. It's a picture of salvation yeah. that we receive. Those see, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. This is a, re a representation of salvation. Okay. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my command, then you shall judge my house, and likewise have charge of my courts, and I will give you places to walk among those who stand here. He's going to be in charge. He's going to lead the way, and he's going to do it in righteousness. Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. Who is that? Jesus. <laughs> For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon the stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. In one day? How's that going to happen? It happens at the seventh trump when Jesus returns. <laughs> In that day, says the Lord of hosts, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. And then you know what that means? Yes. Enjoying peace and prosperity. This is just what I was going to say. Go ahead, read yes. it. I don't know. I really like this. Read. Go ahead, read it. Enjoying, it says, in that day, declares the Lord of hosts, every one of you will invite his neighbor to sit under his vine and his fig tree, enjoying peace and prosperity in the kingdom. See that? Under the vine and under the fig tree? Guess what that is? An idiom. Huh. It means peace and prosperity. Is that, everywhere you see that, that's what that means. It's in, in several other places. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Huh. Look up Kings. Four, First Kings 425, somebody. Whip it out. First Kings 425. Chasta, go to uh, Isaiah 36, 16. 36, 16. Kathy, go to Micah 4, 4. First Kings 4, 25. King James. Go ahead. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, every man under his vine and under his fig tree. From Dan, even unto the Beersheba, all the days of Solomon. All right. Read to Isaiah 36, 16. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for this is what the king of Assyria says. Make peace with me and come out to me. And each one of you will eat from his own vine and each from his own fig tree. And each one of you drink from the water of his own cistern. Okay. Micah 4, 4. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. I like that one. <laughs> what was that one? Michael Micah one. 4 4. Yeah. Micah 4 4. So when you sit under your vine and under your fig tree, you're at rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Everything's copacetic. <laughs> yeah. And in one day! Wake up. Right. <laughs> Monday. Do it again, Lord. <laughs> I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. That's when Jesus comes down, buddy. Hallelujah, man. It's going to be a big hallelujah time then now. <laughs> Morning, sir. Okay. Well, yeah. Morning. Chapter 4. Vision of the lampstand and the olive trees. Next vision. Now the angel 
and talked with me, came back and wakened me. See, he's being wakened up. This is not a dream. He's seeing this. As a man who was wakened out of his sleep, and he said to me, What do you see? So I said, I am looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it, and on the stand, seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right of the bowl and the other at its left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? So I said, No, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord that is rubable, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. You ever heard that one before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. Don't we quote that all the time? He's talking to Zerubbabel. You got, you, got, you got this, bro. I'm with you. Not by might nor your power, but my spirit is with you, Zerubbabel. You can do this. Man, we should say that every day. You can do this, Zerubbabel. You can build this temple. You can build this temple because the angel of the Lord who's working through Zechariah in a few centuries is going to walk through that temple in the flesh. Do you all remember my first day here? My no, was asking if well, I know, I know that, but <laughs> the first day I was here, Myra asked if anyone had a song, and Patty had just invited him, and I was just like, sorry, I'm new, but I actually have a song in my heart that the Lord has given me, and so, and I shared, but he he one time gave me this song and I've not fleshed it out more but it was that verse and it's one of the most beautiful things the Lord has ever given me I'm telling you it's one of my favorite songs he ever gave me but yeah I love that verse yeah. not by my door by a power but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts who are you O great mountain yes have you ever heard that song yes. that's a song too great mountain I would not bow low. What does it say? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Grace, grace. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. So he was telling Zerubbabel, Not only are you going to start this thing, you're going to be here when it's ended. Don't worry about it. You're the man that's in charge. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. You'll, you'll know Zerubbabel. But what I'm telling you is true because when you get to the end, you're going to be there. I'm telling you, you're going to be there. Prophesy, you're going to be there. For who has despised the day of small things? Huh. There's another biggie. We quote that all the time. Wow. 